This video is a snippet of one of the lectures on my Fundamentals of Network Engineering Udemy course. Click the link in the description on the pinned comment to find out more. I wanted to make another lecture detailing the slow start and congestion avoidance algorithm and when do they kick in and how does the transmission look like in the chart. Let's jump into it and discuss. So there are two congestion uh, algorithm basically and they're actually more than that but I'm, I'm sticking to this explaining those two the slow start and the congestion avoidance the slow start is called slow start because we start from one where the congestion window is one one mss maximum segment size basically right and then we start from there so we start very slow but also the slow start algorithm is actually increases aggressively increases the window size exponentially and how does that work every acknowledgement we receive we add one so every acknowledgement focus on that every acknowledgement so if you sent 10 packets and you got 10 acknowledgement you're gonna get 10 added 10 worth of mss sizes added to your congestion window right so that's how basically the slow start algorithm so it's very aggressive compare that to the congestion avoidance which is the second phase of the algorithm well, second phase of the congestion control where we flip from the slow start to the congestion avoidance because there is a threshold that slow start have and once we reach that threshold flip become a little more conservative what does that mean it means once the slow start reaches its threshold this kicks in what does that mean it means you're going to increase the uh, you can continue to increase the congestion window but only for the entire round trip not every acknowledgement what does that mean a round trip is basically you send a whole a round trip to us like back in engineers when you send an http request when you get back that response from the http request that's a round trip at the application layer right you send uh, one request and you get back a response that's one round trip but what does it mean to the tcp right uh, a request might have 30 packets, right? But what if only one, you got a response for one of those packets, right? That's not a response. That's not a whole round trip, right? A whole round trip is like when you acknowledge and receive the entire response, right? So for the TCP, if you have a conjunction window, let's say of four packets, that's the size, and you send four worth packets, a round trip in this case is if you receive a con uh, an acknowledgement for the four packets, that's a round trip and only then you're going to get an, an additional one mss size to a congestion window so it's a little bit more conservative obviously if you think about it so it adds slower if you think about it right so obviously congestion window must not increase the receiver window otherwise uh, the flow control will basically be useless in this case right so we cannot exceed that so congestion detection, what happens when we actually detect congestion? And that's basically a question that being uh, trying to redefine what that means. There is a paper out there called the HOMA paper that tries to reinvent TCP for the data center the entirely. And this is one of the big things they are redefining, the concept of a congestion. You see, in TCP, uh, when you detect a dropped packet that means there is a transmission timer you send it and if that timer ran out before we got an acknowledgement that's a dropped packet we consider that lost and when that packet is lost we detect we we assume there is a congestion so routers in the middle their buffer sizes have ex have exceeded their limit and my packet was dropped so that's what the congestion here the homo paper redefines what all that means go watch my coverage on my youtube channel if you're interested in that and if you can read the paper you can read the paper and if you finish this course you can easily read that paper and understand everything in it and that because you have the fundamentals by the by the end of this course right? you should be able to and that's the that's my goal with these with these courses basically lay down the fundamentals so so what happens when we detect conjunction two things happen the first thing you remember we talked about the slow start threshold there is a threshold where we hit when we hit that threshold for the congestion window we flip to the congestion avoidance we reduce that threshold we make it even less by how much by whatever the number of packets that are unacknowledged that we sent and we lost and we didn't get acknowledgement however number of bytes it's called the flight size divide that by two 
So I know a lot of people and uh, some some implementation and talking about that, they do just say, hey, whatever the conjecture window divided by two, that's not entirely correct because the conjecture window is actually greater than whatever is the flight size because you might have one segment in flight and that was detected a, a conjecture, right? So you divide the flight size of that segment by two, not the whole conjecture window, right? Because you're going to get a larger value in this case and you can get into errors and bugs. Right? So it's actually the, whatever the flight size, this number is less than this. Right? It can be equal, of course. You might have your entire worth of uh, CW and D might be lost. And that, in this case, you might be right. But most of the times will be, you will be wrong. The second we thing we do is, after reducing the slow start threshold, we also reset the value back to 1, 1 MSS. Right? So we essentially start over. But now, when we start over, uh, we're going to kick back the slow start algorithm. Why? Because the CWND is less than the threshold. So we start with the slow start. And uh, this way, we're going to reach the slow start threshold quicker than before. So it's slightly faster, but still, it's going to ramp up back, right? So that's, that's what we're doing. So you might say, okay, we're reducing the slow start, but isn't it eventually going to hit zero? That's bad. Well, there is a limit. The minimum slow start threshold is actually two times the maximum segment size. And this is all defined in the RFC. I'm going to reference it, and it's attached to this lecture. You can look at it. I highlighted the part that is important, at least uh, in my opinion. So take a look at that. It's cool. Pretty cool stuff. Here's the chart um, for the slow start versus the congestion avoidance algorithm. What exactly happened? So in the y-axis here, we have the number of bytes for the congestion window. Right? You can see we start from one segment maximum segment size. Right? Why did I add another S? Just one maximum segment size. And then we in the in the uh, X axis, this is the time. And this is the algorithm. I copied it from the RFC, page seven. Uh, take a look at it. But the orange thing is slow star algorithm. The white is the conjunction avoided. You can see this is linear. This is exponential. So let's take an example. Uh, and obviously one thing is the sl uh, slow start threshold. See the dotted lines? These are the th slow start thresholds. And you can see they are decreasing every time. So we start with MMSS. We increase, 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 increase uh, as we get more acknowledgements up until we hit the threshold. Once we hit the threshold, flip the algorithm. Congestion triggered. Da -da 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 and then once, once we hit a congestion, we detected a congestion. That means some of the packets are dropped and my transmission timer has been expired go down to one that really hits if you hit this that really hit, hits hard your in your application you're gonna feel it because now your your transmission slows down to back to one so now your window size reduced back to one mss which is what uh, 1500 bytes it's actually less than that but you get the point based on your uh, mtu right the maximum transmission unit and then we start over but look what we did. We also reduced the threshold, right? By how much? In this particular case, this much, right? And this is basically however many in-flight packets were there that are anaclonging. We divided by two, and that's how we reduced it. And now we start over. Hit that again, right? Almost there. I need to fix that chart. But yeah, once we hit that threshold, we flip to the conjunction uh, control, and then we hit it again. We reduce back to one, reduce the threshold, and then we do it again, the slow start. We hit that threshold, flip to the conjunction, and then we detected a conjunction. We go it down, but look at that. We already reached the two MSS, which is this, basically. So this is one MSS, this is what two MSS. We can't go lower than that based on this algorithm because we're taking the max of the flight size and then the to MSS, right? So that's the ma the maximum we can get here, the minimum, I guess, right? So then we move on, and then you can see the chart will remain this. There are a, a different chart based on another algorithm called the fast retransmission. 
that's another algorithm i'm not gonna cover it in this lecture if you enjoyed this video consider grabbing my fundamentals of network engineering udemy course i designed this course specifically for software engineers where i explain the first principle of network engineering but as a software engineer with a top to bottom approach head to network.husseinnasr.com for a discount coupon link below in the description